Back in the day when it came to toys for boys and girls, things were pretty straightforward. Robots, soldiers, superheroes, and anything that carried a weapon or sported an action feature were all definitely for boys. And on the flip side, dolls or anything cute and cuddly were for girls. So it wasn't much of a surprise that during the first year of Transformers, a boy's toy line, there wasn't a single female character or toy to be found. That all changed though in 1986 when the first major female Transformer was introduced. And while she wasn't exactly cute or cuddly as would have been expected at the time, Hasbro made sure she didn't stray too far off from the tried and true formula and made her pink. Back in the 80s, it was a common belief by toy companies that female characters didn't really appeal to boys. That making a female toy or action figure in a boy's line was equal to creating a peg warmer that would just languish in the toy store shelves for months. So as a result, the female presence in almost every toy line aimed towards boys was usually reduced to that one token representative, and that was that. Since the Transformers were all about robots, where technically sex didn't really matter, this whole notion of female Transformers went largely unexplored for the first few years of the toy line and cartoon. Sure, in the show's second season, they introduced Elita One and her band of merry female Autobots, who were left on Cybertron to continue the fight on their home front. But they were mostly all one-note characters, never to be seen again after their one featured story arc. But finally, in 1986, that all changed with the introduction of the Autobot, RC, the first female Transformer who would be a main character moving forward. RC was introduced as one of the new lead characters in the 1986 animated Transformers, the movie. According to movie writer Ron Friedman, Hasbro was absolutely against the idea of including a female Transformer, but he insisted because his daughter was a fan. Obviously, he got his way, but coming out of the gate, it was pretty clear that despite Mr. Friedman's reasonings for her inclusion, Hasbro still wanted her to appeal more to the boys. With that in mind, RC sported a lot of cliché design details similar to many superheroines at the time. Her head seemed to sport two buns similar to a certain iconic princess from a galaxy far, far away. And the color placement on her body seemed to suggest that she was wearing some sort of bikini or leotard. Oh, and for good measure, and maybe as a rather weak attempt to appeal to girls, she was predominantly pink and transformed into a convertible car that looked like something Barbie would love to drive around in. Standing next to her bigger and bulkier comrades, it's easy to dismiss RC as simply being the token female member of the cast, made to just look pretty and pink. But that would be quite a disservice to the character. To be fair, she did hold her own in combat and rarely played the typical damsel in distress role. Unfortunately, since her inclusion was due to a writer's insistence and not as part of an initiative to sell more toys, like most of the other new movie characters, fans of RC had to wait several years later before we finally got an official plastic representation of her on our shelves. But just because there weren't any RC toys for years doesn't mean that Hasbro or Takara or any other toy makers didn't try. There have been pictures of concepts and prototypes that have surfaced over the years of planned RC toys, but based on how they looked, I think it was pretty obvious why these never actually saw the light of day. For the most part, what collectors got were either pink and white repaints of existing robots or completely different Transformers that had nothing really in common with the original movie character except for being female and named RC. To my knowledge, the first toy that bared a close, albeit highly stylized resemblance to the original RC was released in 2010 as part of that year's Transformers animated line. But this was based on a more updated and reimagined version of the character, not exactly the original 86 movie version. We had to wait a few more years later, 2014 to be exact, almost three decades after her introduction, for Hasbro to finally give us an official Generation 1 representation of RC as part of their Thrilling 30 line. While it was far from perfect, it was an adequate plastic representation of RC that fans welcomed with open arms and wallets. Since then, RC toys have been fairly common in both retail, masterpiece, and on the third-party front. I won't really go into detail over all the different versions out there, and instead, give a rundown of my personal favorites. In retail, I went with a 2022 Studio Series 86 RC, which ironically is an almost straight-up update of the 2014 version in terms of engineering and design. When it comes to the Masterpiece Transformers though, for the longest time that spot was taken by third-party company Fans Toys, Rouge. While most people dubbed her as the worst toy released by Fans Toys, a company usually known for their high-quality products, I thought she was good enough. 
Despite the horrible engineering and noticeable step down in Fans Toys quality and construction, I just felt that Rouge had the best robot and vehicle modes as compared to anything else out there at the time. I mean, would you call this a masterpiece? Eventually though, Takara came out with their official masterpiece RC and for the most part, the reviews were pretty decent to great. But there was one thing about the design that just didn't quite look right to me. Yes, I know we're talking about a robot and I am not a creep. But honestly, she just didn't look anatomically up there, you know? Ultimately though, I did end up getting it. Well, sort of. I opted to get the knockoff version of this masterpiece named Robot Rose. My reasons were pretty obvious. Yes, they did fix that little problem that the official one had. But more than that, on a whole, the quality was improved and cost half the price of the original. While I know many collectors look down on knockoffs and rightfully so, for me, it's all about value for money. And so, in a rather unprecedented move for a fan's toys fanatic like myself, I actually switched out my rouge for a rose. And speaking of switching out, since you haven't switched me out yet, I'm guessing that you're into this story. And if that's the case, I hope you can help me out tell more stories by subscribing to my channel. And if you already have, thank you and please spread the word. Anyway, that's enough self-promotion for now. Let's get to the other side of the proverbial coin, and that would be RC as a character. It seems writers across the different comics and cartoons that follow the 86 movie have made a more conscious effort of making RC even more unique. Given that, here are a few notable versions of RC that have existed through the years and who have rather been different from the original character. First up, live action movie RC. Despite some positive points like amazing CGI work, the live action Transformers movie franchise is infamous for pretty much giving us robots with close to zero personalities. And unfortunately, the live action version of RC is no exception. Another notable difference here was that this live action movie version would be one of the first to change her alt mode from a futuristic car into a motorcycle. During the early production stages of the first movie, RC was earmarked to be part of the initial team of Autobots, but she was later dropped because her motorcycle alt mode would make her robot mode only slightly larger than a human, and they wanted to feature bigger bots. Despite not actually appearing in the movie though, Hasbro did release a decent toy for this version of RC, which I guess was based on their design concepts. And speaking of movie RC toys, a reworked RC design for the next movie would in turn spawn one of the worst Transformer toys ever released by Hasbro. RC eventually made her live action debut in 2009's Revenge of the Fallen, and she was also joined by her two bike sisters, Chromia and Alito One. Early design concepts show that the original idea was to have these three characters have the ability to merge to one robot, thus solving the problem of having a robot that was too small. But this was never shown in the movie. In fact, RC and her sisters were pretty much background characters who to my knowledge were never even referred to by name at all. They just had one action sequence in the beginning of the movie and were unceremoniously killed off in the climactic battle in the end. And they were never heard of again. She did make a significant live action movie return, first with a cameo in the reboot, not reboot, prequel, not prequel, Bumblebee movie, and then as a main Autobot team member in Rise of the Beasts. Fortunately, this RC looks nothing like the half-robot, half-bike Bay vs. Monstrosity and more like your traditional looking RC. Personality-wise though, there really wasn't much to write home about yet. It's still too early to make any conclusions about this movie RC. But it is a definite improvement, so that's good enough for now. Next, Transformers Prime. In 2010, RC was part of the main cast to the CGI animated series Transformers Prime, which while being a completely new series, shared similar concepts and design cues with the live action movies. Fortunately, the writing and characterization of this series was much better. Like the live action movie RC, Prime RC also transformed into a motorcycle. But it would be worth noting that she broke tradition in that she was a blue motorcycle as opposed to past RCs who were predominantly pink. The reason for this change was that she was meant to partner up with one of their lead humans, Jack Darby, who was a guy, and the writers felt it would be odd to have a guy ride around in a pink bike. Anyway, this RC, while still displaying a caring side, was more brash and jaded than her original version. It is explained that she suffers from a form of PTSD from having lost two of her partners in the past, the Autobot Tailgate who was killed on Cybertron, and more recently Cliffjumper, who in a way to shock the audience was initially introduced as a main character in the promos and then killed off in the first episode. This RC is one of the most heavily featured characters in the entire series, with her personal story arc being one of the main focuses of the show. 
After Cliff Jumper's death, she starts off withdrawn from the team and is hesitant to build new relationships out of fear of losing anyone else. Over time, she slowly learns to cope with her losses and move forward with yet another new partner in Jack. It also goes without saying that she is a more formidable and accomplished warrior in the series. And finally, we have the IDW RC. Unlike the original RC who just appeared in the 1986 movie, the IDW universe set out to give her a proper origin and explanation for her differences. It started a long, long, long time ago, millions of years well before there were even Autobot and Decepticon factions. Way back when, RC was better known as RC of the Darklands. A savage warrior who battled in the gladiatorial arena of his master, Septimus Prime. Yup, you heard that right. In the IDW universe, RC was originally male, and more than that, he was the twin brother of another iconic Transformer, Galvatron, who in this continuity was a completely separate character from Megatron. Anyway, over the years, both RC and Galvatron served under different masters but ultimately went their separate ways. RC eventually came across the mad genius Giaxus, who was attempting to reintroduce the female gender back into the Transformers species. Now this is a whole other story for another time. Anyway, having never felt completely comfortable in his current body, RC allowed himself to be experimented on by Giaxus, eventually transforming him into the female RC that we are more familiar with. Unfortunately, the end result didn't live up to Giaxus' expectations and he abandoned her, considering her a reject. This left RC mentally unhinged, and she spent a good part of her existence hunting down Giaxus, hell-bent on his destruction and any other experiments and individuals associated with him. Ironically, when she finally did catch up with him, it was in a location under the influence of the dead universe, and as a result, Giaxus could not die. So she spent the next six years or so killing him over and over and over again, which fortunately served as a rather demented form of therapy with a positive effect on straightening up her head. Eventually, she officially joined the Autobot cause and the rest is history. So the IDW version of RC is definitely the most radical take on the character with a whole lot more details that I purposely left out to keep it as basic as possible for people not quite interested in knowing all the gritty details. There definitely is a lot more to this version of RC and if you are interested to read more about her, I'll leave a link to her IDW wiki entry on the description below. Anyway, while I'm not a huge fan of the idea of RC originally being male and being a failed experiment, I have to admit that it's a genuine attempt by the writers at IDW to bring something new on the table for the RC character. As a whole, I don't really feel the need to interject the concepts of sexuality and gender in the Transformers universe, but I can still appreciate how it can enrich the mythos as a whole. At the end of the day, for me, it all goes back to the original RC. Even at an early stage wherein her inclusion into the mythos seemed more like a matter of appeasing a persistent writer's request or checking boxes, the original RC did manage to stand out and make a positive impression on my young self. RC displayed a lot of positive and admirable personality traits, usually not shown by most of her fellow Autobots, like Springer, who had better things to do than die, or Ultra Magnus, who simply couldn't deal with that right now. During the Decepticon attack on Autobot City, while everyone else was either fighting or scrambling for cover, she was busy dragging away fallen comrades to safety. She was constantly looking out for the well-being of her fellow Autobots, and she was especially protective of their human companion, Daniel, whom she eventually binary bonded with to become a headmaster in order to save his life. RC displayed a more subtle inner strength and a deeper sense of caring and responsibility for her comrades not typically expressed by others. And that makes her more special and important in my book. And I think it's a safe bet to say most others feel the same way as RC in whatever form or character has grown to be one of the most popular and iconic Transformer characters of all time. So are there any other fans of RC out there? Who are some of your other favorite female Transformers? Let me know in the comments below and tell me your story. Hey wait up! Don't go just yet! If you've gotten this far, I'm assuming you enjoyed this story. So why not check out more Transformer stories here? Or this specific story over here? Either way, thanks for watching and hope you come back for more.